the reason I am in such a, I would call it fairly anxious free, especially when you consider what I'm up to, very happy state is because I fix this, the well, not the sink. I'm in religion, not tactics. Here's yeah. what I mean by that. It is more fun to me to run a business and start a business than it is to go golfing or water sports at a lake or tennis or the movies. It's why so many people that work with me are my friends. My actual happiest place is in business creation and operations. So you really found for, your joy. Yeah, this is why I was so unhappy in my youth, at least from my school day to day. I was so quickly, call it third grade, fourth grade latest, in this weird kind of like wisdom. You know, I spent a lot of time with grandparents and old people, not my grandparents, because unfortunately they died in the old country in Russia, but would always be attracted to old people, would sit with them on the bus and talk to them would, at the park. And I don't know if, I'm an old soul where I extracted a lot of wisdom, but by fourth grade, I'm like, oh, this is not for me. That's okay. That's not like I'm a spoiled brat and I don't want to do school. It's, oh, this is really not for me. I really love this thing, business, selling baseball cards, lemonade stands. Like in the summer, it was more fun to me while my friends were like, hey, let's go do slip and slide or play baseball. I was like, yes, and I like those things. But one out of every two days in the summer, I was like, let's go wash cars. Let's do a lemonade stand. <laughs> Let's start a flea market. It was just very natural for me to want to do business. And so when people, this is why I'm always interested in doing longer form content, because I want people to hear this. I don't burn out because I'm not about the money. I'm not buying homes that I can't afford and I need them. People burn out when they're anxious or stuck. I don't need the money yeah. to buy something to impress people. I don't need the money to pay my bills. Why? Because I live far more humbly than my earnings. And I did that, by the way, Justin, not today when I make a lot more money. When I was in my early 20s building my dad's liquor store for him, I was making $40,000, $50,000 a year. But I lived in a fucking $1,400 apartment and then basically did nothing else. Like literally had no other expense. When you don't go out, when you don't buy stuff, when you don't need $800 sneakers, when you don't need to go to Coachella. So, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with all that stuff. And I want everybody to enjoy their lives, but I was so self-aware that, and, and so the answer to your question is, I'm doing what I love every day. Truly, not some fucking, you know, bullshit, like love what you do, you like, you know, that, that, you know, that, you know, love what you do, you never work a day of your life. There is no bigger poster child for that than me. I genuinely like what I do every day more than every alternative besides the thought of like spending time with my family who's not in my business. Like, like you know, like I love that about, that's why I have a business with my dad and my brother, right? And like, yeah. why, I, why I even have thoughts of like, can I do something with my sister? It forces me to spend more time with them because this is my playground that I want to be in. I love going out to dinner with them after work. I love the weekends. We have, I love vacation. I love all that. I love family time, but I don't think people burn out because they don't have enough family time. I think they burn out because they have this very poor relationship with the money they're trying to extract out of their career or business and how they spend their money in their life and what they spend their money on. When I say go hard, I, I always, 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 always add in, if you love it so much, it doesn't feel like you're going hard. People separate my words. There, I, I can't go, Amy, I can't go hard at anything. I was the worst student of all time. Amy, do you know that I went through four years of high school without doing a single piece of homework or studying I literally went my sophomore, junior, senior year without opening a book, a book. Zach, I did not open a book. I would bring it home. I'd have fun with my mom covering the book with the, you know, like the paper bag and like drawing on it. I like, I didn't go, I don't, I can't go hard on handy work around my apartment. I hate it. I can't go hard on that. You can only go hard if you love it. Otherwise you will crash and burn.
Yes, so that's exactly what I did. I crashed and burned. And now my problem is I can't seem to bounce back from that. Um, I will, like, I also have a lot of uh, mental health issues. I take medications and stuff for my own. Everybody's got their own stuff, you know? Yeah, I do. And that maybe if I get the right meds, that can fix me up a little bit. But I honestly just think- No, 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 no. Did you listen to the prior thing, the word yet? No. Where, did you listen to the last Q and A where I was like, you haven't, uh, to the car, uh, the barbershop car wash guy or no? I like personally- you, get, you were getting set up, got it. So, Aim, you just haven't gotten it right yet. And I don't even think, listen, I, I have no interest in speaking to people's medical conditions. I don't, you know, I don't know those things, but I can tell you right now, even your spirit is so bright on this call. You're a winner. You just, you just literally haven't, what you're doing is so classic. You had the supervisor thing, so there was title, there was guaranteed money coming in. You chose happiness. I applaud you for that. Can we clap it up for her? <laughs> Amy, you chose happiness. And now you're trying to reset and maybe you don't have a couple of things you had before. A title, the steady income let yet, but yet. It's a foregone conclusion. Once you had it, you'll always have it. You were clearly capable. So I'm trying to do what I, so I, when I told you I did the podcast back then with some friends, I was pretty good at that. Um, and I got a lot of compliments that I did good research, that I held a good interview and stuff like that. I really like getting to know people. I like to have a story. Um, I'm a very empathetic person as well. So I feel like I could potentially do some interviews and relate to people on different levels than they've done in other interviews. Okay. So I get the ball rolling with that. Okay. Um, you know that. You know that's hard as shit though. Having a successful yeah. podcast is hard. You need to do that for your joy and then yeah. maybe over time it becomes something, but you need to take these incredible people skills and deploy them against a job as well. A job, like, I don't know what job is good enough for that. Like I, I'd be great working at a movie theater. I'm great with that. So, but go, work, so go work at a movie theater. It doesn't pay enough. What's enough? Pricey down here. Oh, listen, so, I get it. I think the price, like, it all becomes a game of like, what are you trying to achieve? I mean, the question becomes very simply like, can you live within the means of something that makes you happy? 60,000 a year is enough if you live within a $60,000 a year lifestyle. It's not if you live within a $180,000 a year lifestyle, right? So right. you have to also know, like, what do you want money for? Yeah, well, I would eventually like to just get it to a point where I can do something that I enjoy for work so I can love what I'm doing every day, like you kind of talk about. So I would like yeah. to get. So, go ahead, go ahead. If I could get to like doing, the, if I could just keep this day job that I'm doing for the next couple of years, I can get through that if I have something joyous on the out, on the out. Got it. You, you believe, well, but that didn't work for you last time. You had that before. You had a job as a supervisor that you didn't like, but you had this podcast that was joyous, but it didn't work. Yeah. Why not just make your job joyous? That's the hard part. Ish, if you decide it's hard, why don't you just spend all your time applying to things that you theoretically think could work for you? Like the reality is you would like anything if the environment at the job was good. You're a people person. Yeah. There's a lot of people at Vayner right now that love their job, but they don't love, love advertising the way I do. They just love the people around them. Okay. You're looking, for, I think you're looking for a good work environment potentially. That makes me think I need to go back to the office because right now I'm working from home. You so definitely, maybe, by the way, Amy, yeah. most people need to go back to the office because of just the human part of it. If you're a people person, it's really nice to be back in the office. That's true. Not, and not everybody's a people person, but a lot of people are. I just feel like it takes away like you got two hour commute. It's one one hour there, one hour back. That's two hours of my day. I could be doing something more productive. But you're sitting at home and being miserable. Yeah. So the fuck are we doing? You like music? I do like music. Well fucking listen to music for an hour each way. It's a fucking joy. That's pretty good advice. Amy, people make up things in theory that they think are smart when they're not smart at all. You're you're putting you like that? Oh, you meant the boom. Got it. I wasn't sure which one. It was part of that. It was a little bit of both. You are into doing two things at once today, Amy. I people love to create a theory of like, oh, commuting one hour each way is a bad idea because their friend said it. That's on crack. 
you know, or like they hear it in society or like they worry about the gas cost. I, I understand how people's brains work, but like commuting an hour each way might not be bad for you, especially if you decide the commute's awesome. I miss commuting to Wine Library, Amy. I called my mom every day. Best thing I could be doing with my time. I fucking listen to sports radio and would like yell at fucking Mike and the Mad Dog and be like, you fuckers are wrong with Nick's argument. Like, like I enjoy, I put in Bone Thugs and fucking Harmony and listen to it and bang to first of the month. I enjoyed it. Did I love being in traffic between New York and New Jersey and the fucking GW? No, but because I was good, I wasn't mad. If you're fucking mad, you're gonna be pissed about everything. You're unhappy right now. Don't tell me about the theory of annoyance when you're unhappy. And guess what? You're allowed to change your mind. Go do it. And if like in six months you're driving for 40 minutes on a one hour commute and it's like a huge accident, you're just sitting there and you're like, this fucking blows. Then you can be like, you know what? Fuck Gary V, he's wrong, I'm quitting. And then you can change your mind again. All right, so, so don't so don't wait and do this miserable job and then wait till the podcast works out and then I can be happy. I should just try to find something that can make me happy now. 100,000% because what you're that's not going to work. Okay.